Hi, it's Angela with Food Storage and Survival.com, and today we're going to talk about one of my greatest fears. And we're going to talk about seven ways to alleviate that fear and do something proactive to help that from, from becoming a bigger problem than it could be. All right, so it doesn't matter what kind of disaster you have, one of my greatest fears is that my family will not be together. So either I'll lose somebody uh, in the aftermath or we won't all be home at the same time when this, whatever the disaster is happens and we'll be scattered around. So think about your average day with school, work, extracurricular activities. How much time are you really all in one place at the same time? For us, it's not very much. Uh, my husband has a job that he travels around and he's actually you know, regularly three hours away from home. Uh, kids are all in different schools, so we've got them scattered all over the place. So the, the likelihood of something happening when my family is not all in the same place is pretty high. So what can we do about it? Well, here's seven tips for you to help keep your family together in an emergency. Number one, have a plan. Make a plan. Make sure that everybody knows the plan. So this could be a family meeting that you have where you figure out what's your plan for an emergency. Then write it down. Now, I say write it down. I'm sure you all don't have communication disconnects in your family like we do. But if you write it down, everybody knows exactly what the plan is. It's not what they thought the plan was, but, but they know what the plan is. It's written down. Gets everybody on the same page and there's no forgetting because it's written down. Then you make copies of that plan. You have a copy at the house and you have a copy in your vehicles. If you want to, you can send a copy with your kids in their backpack, you know, print it out maybe little and stick it in their backpack so that they've got a copy of the family emergency plan. And then practice that plan. Practice, practice, practice so that they know what to do. Everybody's comfortable with it. All right. Step number two, have more than one way to communicate. Cell phones are great, aren't they? But sometimes the cell phones aren't going to work. In big emergencies, you kind of get cell phone overload. And for some reason, cell phones, you can't, everybody can't get their calls through at the same time. So maybe text. Sometimes texts can go through when calls can't. Maybe a two-way radio, maybe a ham radio. If you're going to use a ham radio, you do need to make sure that everybody who's going to be talking on the radio is licensed, which isn't really hard to do. So just it's one of those things that you just put some time into and you can get ham licensed. There's no age limit, so even your kids can get licensed on amateur radio. Uh, tip number three, have a code word, especially in case you need to give a lot of information in a very small amount of time. Remember Alas Babylon? Did you watch, did, watch that? Did you read that book? Uh, it was written, I can't remember, in the 50s, I think. But Alas Babylon was the code word between these two brothers, that things were going down in a hurry. And they had a plan, and the code word put the plan into place. So maybe your code word puts a plan into place, starts action. Maybe it's a code word for somebody to do a specific thing. And that way you can communicate that thing and other people don't know what you're talking about. Code words are great. All right, tip number four for keeping your family together in an emergency is to know the emergency plans of schools and care centers that your children attend. This means you actually have to usually go talk to somebody and just say, what are your emergency plans? Maybe they have plans uh, for specific events and you want to know what the plans are so that you can work with those plans. Do they have restrictions on parents picking their kids up in the event of an emergency? You figure it out and this is for every care center your children are at or school that they attend during the day. If you have elderly family members in a care center, you know, check on their check on their plans too. Anybody that's away from home wherever they are at you want to know the plans at that place so that your plan can coordinate with that plan 
All right, tip number five, keep updated family photos in your emergency kit. Regular clothes are great. Uh, casual pictures are great. Little snapshots, selfies, whatever, because that's how you're gonna look in an emergency. You're not gonna be all dressed up, going out to dinner with your hair done fancy. You're gonna look like you normally do. So your regular everyday pictures are fantastic. You want a picture because if somebody gets separated from you, how much easier is it to show a picture and say, have you seen this kid, than trying to describe that kid. He was about this tall, sandy blonde hair, you know, I mean, that could be 15, 20, 50 different kids. But with a picture, it makes it easy for other people to say, yes, I've seen that kid. No, I haven't, but they know who they're looking for. All right, tip number six, establish at least two meeting places. This is part of your planning. You want one meeting place within walking distance of your home in case just your home is uninhabitable. So maybe a friend's house or a community center or a church, someplace in your town or neighborhood that you can meet as a family in case your home is not able to be the meeting place. Place number two that you want, you want within a half a tank of gas. So maybe you want to look at that one in a couple of different directions. And a half a tank of gas, because you're supposed to have a half a tank of gas, at least in your vehicle all the time, right? You do fill up that half tank. Okay, just making sure, because it's important if you have to get out of town really fast, you're gonna have your half a tank of gas, you can get to wherever you're going to go, or you're more likely to be able to. All right, you might look at two different directions on that one in case the regional emergency is from your house south, then you have a north meeting place. Or if it's from your house north, then you have a south meeting place. And everyone from wherever they are, where they're working or at school, knows that that's where the meeting place is. All right, tip number seven, have a long-term meeting plan long-term separation plan okay it is the end of the world this is a huge huge uh, widespread disaster there's no communication for weeks or months this is the type of emergency you're planning for here have a specific day and a specific place every year that you are going to meet so maybe pick two or three days a year mom's birthday dad's birthday thanksgiving uh, halloween whatever days you want make them easy to remember and then pick a place like the park at the center of town and your whole family knows that on mom's birthday there will be family at the park at the center of town and so they can work to get there because they know that you will meet them there at that specific place at that specific time during the year all right having my family together is a top priority for me and while there's no guarantees these seven tips can help you keep your family together in an emergency. Thanks so much for watching. You can always find more from me on my blog, foodstorageandsurvival.com.